you had Cartoon Network growing up, chances are you remember hanging out with Robin, Starfire, Raven, Cyborg, and Beast Boy. That's right, here on Tuned Up, we're counting down 107 facts you need to know about Teen Titans. The original, we're not, no, we're not doing the new one. Number one. In a rare move by a network, Cartoon Network asked the show's creators to take risks. Sam Register, the former vice president of Cartoon Network, told the creative team, quote, I want you to do things you're not supposed to do. Number two. Here's a story about a man named Brady, or should we say, Killer Moth. The villain's house is decorated identically to that of the the classic sitcom family, The Brady Bunch. Number three. The theme song of Teen Titans is sung by Japanese pop slash rock duo Puffy. In the United States, they're called Puffy Amiyumi to distinguish them from Sean Combs. Also known as Puff Daddy, Puffy Diddy, P Diddy, or as my uncle calls him, Puff Dragon. Number four. There are two versions of the songs that alternately play before episodes. One has the lyrics sung in English, while the other has them sung in Japanese. The show's voice director, Andrea Romano, revealed that when the Japanese theme song is played before an episode, it will be a silly one. When the English theme song is played, the episode will be more serious. Number five. Exceptions to the theme song rule of serious and comedic episodes are Nevermore and Every Dog Has His Day. Number six. The lyrics of the Japanese version of the song are not a direct translation of the lyrics of the English version. Number seven. If you're curious about what the Japanese theme song's lyrics really mean, listen to Beast Boy in Teen Titans, Trouble in Tokyo. He sings a translation of them. I will eat everything without likes or dislikes. Teen Titans! Number eight. Beast Boy's real name is Garfield Logan. Number nine. Cyborg's real name is Victor Vic Stone. Number ten. Starfire's real name is Coriander or Corianders. Number 11. Robin's real name is Dick Grayson. Number 12. Tara's real name is Tara Markov. Number 13. Raven's real name is just Raven. That's so Raven, right? No? Okay. Number 14. Thanks to the popularity of Teen Titans, the cartoon and series' version of Raven, her comic counterpart was brought back from the dead. Hopefully I become popular enough in my lifetime that the same thing happens to me. Number 15. The show's Raven has telekinetic powers, unlike her DC Comics self. Number 16. In the episode Mad Mod, the titular character Mad Mod tries to brainwash the Titans. He forces them to keep their eyes open and plays strange patterns for them on his hypno screens. This is a reference to the Ludovico technique from the film A Clockwork Orange, which was used to make the character Alex incapable of violence and sexual thought. Number 17. Mad Mod is actually voiced by Malcolm McDowell, who played Alex in A Clockwork Orange. Number 18. Teen Titans makes numerous reference to Gotham City, the former residence of Robin and home of his mentor, Batman. The two were partners before Robin joined the Titans. Number 19. The show's animation style takes influence from the anime Fooly Cooly. Number 20. Beast Boy's love of mopeds also comes from Fooly Cooly. Haruhara Haruko, the show's female lead, has a Vespa motor scooter. Number 21. Marv Wolfman is a comic book writer who worked on DC Comics' The New Teen Titans. He contributed to the show by writing the episodes Deep Six and Titans East. Number 22. While the show's version of Terra vacillated between being good and evil, her original comic book self was just evil. She and Deathstroke even had a little something something going on outside their scheming and spying. Number 23. The first Teen Titans episode to air was Final Exam, but it was actually the third episode made. Number 24. In a similar one in three numbers swap, the Teen Titans episode Car Trouble was the 11th made, was 13th to air. Number 25. Slade Wilson goes by the name Deathstroke in the comics, but it sounded too violent, so producers went with using his real name for the television series. Number 26. In the comics, Slade or Deathstroke is a high-priced bounty hunter rather than a person looking to rule the world. Kinda like Boba. Boba Fett. Number 27. Brother Blood's background was completely altered when he made the transition from comics to TV. Instead of being a demonic cult leader, he became more of a criminal mastermind. Number 28. Hinden Walsh is the voice of Starfire. You may also recognize her as Princess Bubblegum in Adventure Time. Number 29. Tara Strong, a veteran voice actress, auditioned for Teen Titans and thought she'd be a sure fit for the role Starfire. She previously played Bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls, who was a similar character. However, Hinden Walsh blew producers away with her audition and nabbed the part. 
Number 30. Don't feel too bad for Tara Strong, though. She ended up being cast as Raven. Number 31. Much of the show's second season was based on the new Teen Titans comic arc, The Judas Contract, by George Perez and Marv Wolfman. Number 32. The show's lineup of teen heroes is based on the classic lineup from the 1980s comics of Marv Wolfman and George Perez. Number 33. Kid Flash, or Wally West, is missing from the lineup, but was added later. Wonder Girl could not be used at the time because of the Wonder Embargo. Number 34. With the success of the show, the comics brought back the old lineup as well, teaming the characters up with younger protégés to mentor. Number 35. DC Comics optioned Teen Titans to be made into an animated series way back in the early 1980s. At the time, though, the rights to Robin, in conjunction with the rights to Batman, were already held by another animation company. Number 36. Early on in the show's development, showrunners considered throwing out Robin's shirt and green underpants, which in this context sounds like an awesome Christmas outfit, and going for a look more on the way to Nightwing's costume. Number 37. In the new Teen Titans comic, Garfield Logan was called Changeling, but the show's creators wanted to go with the character's original codename, Beast Boy, which kind of sounds like a German trying to pronounce Best Buy. Number 38. Around the time the series began airing, the comics changed Logan's codename back to Beast Boy. Number 39. Teen Titans marks the animated debut of the Doom Patrol. The show's lineup of the team included Mento, Elastic Girl, Negative Man, and Robot Man. Number 40. The show's creative team made the decision to keep Beast Boy from speaking any human languages while in an animal form. Number 41. If you were jealous of Mad Mod's little Teen Titan figures from the episode Revolution, go out and hunt them down for yourself, and you can one-up Mad Mod by getting Robin as well. Number 42. Raven's mother, Arella, is the only mother of a Titan to be seen in the show. Because of this, Raven is the only Titan to have had both parents make an appearance, if you exclude silhouettes of Robin's parents in the episode Haunted. Number 43. David Slack, a writer and producer on Teen Titans, was completely starstruck when he met Will Wheaton, who voices Aqualad in the series. Number 44. Will Wheaton, in turn, was completely starstruck when he met Marv Wolfman. Wheaton was a huge fan of the comics. Number 45. The fifth season of Teen Titans differed from the previous four by having one large story arc. Writers felt that by the time season five rolled around, the Titans had saved the world from Trigon and matured enough to handle bigger problems. Number 46. The series' creative team originally wanted to have Terra in more episodes of the second season. They wanted to make it feel like she was really part of the group so that when she betrayed the Titans, it would come as a greater shock. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break from all these 107 facts to talk about next week's programming. Next Tuesday on Cartoon Hangover, we have 107 facts about BoJack Horseman. And next Thursday, we got 107 facts about DuckTales on Channel Frederator. Hey, if you like independent animation, every Saturday we have an awesome show called Saturday Morning Cartoons. It's where we showcase all the animations from independent animators and artists in our network. Support original animation, because then they might grow up and make big things. That's how it starts get back to some facts. Number 47. Slade was probably the series' most recognizable villain, but initially producers didn't even know he'd be in a story arc. They originally just planned to have him be the man behind everything, in the same vein as Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget. Number 48. But why did they change their minds? After watching a few episodes, the show's creative team realized that they were teasing something big, and if it wasn't delivered, they were in for some disappointed fans. They couldn't figure out how to resolve the issue until the legendary Bruce Tim visited Glenn Murakami's office. He looked at the scripts for the episode Masks and Apprentice and shared his opinion that the story was about Slade trying to snatch Robin away from his team. Number 49. If you're watching this video, you probably love the Teen Titans. But do you know when the group made their first animated appearance? It actually was an in-Cartoon Network show. The Titans originally appeared in three seven-minute cartoons as part of 1967's The Superman slash Aquaman Hour of Adventure. Back then, the team consisted of Aqualad, Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, and Speedy. That's right, the founding member Robin was missing. Number 50. Producers had a difficult time finding a voice to fit Raven. Voice director Andrew Romano brought Tara Strong in, who tried to use her Batgirl voice to audition for the role. Before she left, she also tried a more raspy voice, which got her the part. Number 51. The theme song for Teen Titans sure is catchy, and we have producer Glenn Murakami to thank for that. He wanted the series to have an iconic theme song, like Transformers or Spider-Man. 
Number 52. In the comics, Gizmo is a middle-aged dwarf. In the series, he's been redesigned as a preteen kid. Number 53. When producers were redesigning Terra for the series, they wanted to make her more contemporary than her comic book counterpart. Instead of a superhero costume, she was given a more normal outfit. Number 54. In Teen Titans, Aqualad has the power to control water through hydrokinesis. Glenn Murakami has said this ability was given to him because it, quote, seemed more anime. Number 55. The series Mas y Menos were created just for the animated series. Creators wanted to have speedsters on the Teen Titans East team. Number 56. Writer and producer David Slack has said that the creative team was flying by the seat of their pants for the first season of the show. In later seasons, things were more planned out. Number 57. The villain Soto from the episode Every Dog Has His Day is actually named after one of the directors of Teen Titans, Alex Soto. Number 58. Beast Boy doesn't really eat meat. Coincidentally, neither does his voice actor Greg Sipes. Sipes has been a vegetarian since he was 8, and in 2009 he became a vegan. Number 59. Tokusatsu fans may have already noticed this, but for Cyborg's design, Glenn Murakami was influenced by the super android from Kikaider. Number 60. For his fourth season debut, Trigon got a spanking new redesign. Producers felt that he needed to be meaner and scarier. Number 61. Sam Register, the former vice president of Cartoon Network, is a huge fan of Marv Wolfman and George Perez's new Teen Titans comics from the 80s, which is why Teen Titans was one of his top choices for a DC properties to adapt. Number 62. Fans of Red X should send their thanks to Sam Register for suggesting that the character be brought back after Robin ditched the alter ego. Number 63. For the second iteration of Red X, the show's creative team drew inspiration from Star Wars' Boba Fett, Speed Racer's Racer X, and Joshua from Teen Titans Issue 20. Number 64. Producers went with portraying Aqualad as a swim team or pro surfer type of guy, of the more serious and less dudish variety though. Number 65. Sam Register wanted Titans East to have a bigger role in the show, but the creative team wasn't so into the idea. When working on episodes with the other Titan team, they sometimes felt they were making spin-offs. Number 66. The episode Mad Mod was originally going to be titled Detention. Number 67. The episode Winner Takes All was originally going to be titled It's How You Play the Game. Number 68. The fifth season of Teen Titans has 13 episodes, but at one point it was going to be 20. Number 69. There were a number of plots that were scrapped when the fifth season was shortened. Slade and the Brotherhood were going to team up, Chief and Robot Man were going to be involved in another story, and Thunder and Lightning and Red Star would have made a reappearance. Number 70. Glenn Murakami has said that the creative team worked together elements of Wolfman and Brez's 1980s Teen Titans with elements of Cardi and Haney's 1960s Teen Titans to create the series. Number 71. In the first episode of the series, Slade is served a tea by a butler who is none other than Wintergreen. In the comics, Wintergreen is Slade, or Deathstroke's regular sidekick. Number 72. When Beast Boy says the line, you're just jealous because I sound like a rock star, it's a pointer to his voice actor, Greg Sipes. In addition to voice acting, Sipes is a reggae ska rock singer. Number 73. Greg Sipes is also a professional surfer, which may explain Beast Boy's chill manner of speech. Number 74. By the time the show reached its fifth season, it had been mandated that the creative team reduce the number of villains with a red and black color scheme. This is likely why Adonis' color scheme is different in his cameos. Number 75. Starfire appears in 63 episodes of Teen Titans. Number 76. Trigon was originally voiced by Keith Jarabajga, but beginning with season 4, the actor was changed to Kevin Michael Richardson. Number 77. For the most part, Gizmo and Jinx were voiced by Lars and Tom, but in Gizmo's final two appearances and Jinx's final appearance, they were voiced by Tara Strong. Number 78. You may have noticed a change in Beast Boys' voice halfway through the show's first season. Greg Sipes' voice actually broke at the time, which forced him to use a higher pitch. Number 79. During the chase scene of the episode Mad Mod, Puffy Amiyumi's song K2G plays. Originally, a song sung by Hinden Walsh or Starfire was going to be used, but it was replaced. Curious fans can find the 
unused tune in the extras of season one's DVD release. Number 80, Raven can read six languages, English, German, Latin, Romanian, Romanian, Ancient Sumerian, and Sanskrit. Number 81, the original working title of Teen Titans, Trouble in Tokyo, was Teen Titans Tokyo. Number 82, Akira fans will love this one. When the Titans are watching Sumo in Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo, five teenagers are shown with their backs towards the viewers. One teen is wearing a red jacket with a pill on the back. He's Kaneda from Katsuhiro Otomo's Akira. Number 83, Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo premiered at San Diego Comic-Con on July 22nd, 2006. It aired on Cartoon Network on September 15th, 2006. It was released on DVD on February 6th, 2007. Number 84, in most shots of cyborgs, his eyes are gray with no pupils, but close-ups reveal that he has dark blue eyes that do indeed have pupils. Number 85. Robin's alternate dimensional counterpart Larry's real name is No Zergyu. This is, of course, Dick Grayson spelled backwards. Number 86. Out of all the Titans, Robin has appeared in most episodes. The only two he missed out on were For Real and Light Speed. Number 87. According to producers, Robin is 5'4". Number 88. Raven is the same height as Robin. Number 89, Starfire is two inches taller than Raven and Robin at five foot six. Number 90, Beast Boy is the shortest at five foot one. Number 91, producers incorporated traits from different iterations of Robin, including Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, and Stephanie Brown to create the Robin in the show. Number 92, Robin is seen without his mask in the series a whopping total of two times. The first time was in the episode, The Sum of His Parts, and the second time was in the movie Trouble in Tokyo. Number 93. Robin's spiky hair isn't on after all. It takes effort. The teen hero styles his hair with gel after he gets up in the morning. Number 94. Starfire is never animated with a navel despite the fact that her animation model sheet includes one. Number 95. Starfire differs from her comic book counterpart in the fact that she's more modest and kind. She also wears a much less revealing outfit. Number 96. Starfire has nine stomachs. Where does she fit them all? Number 97, Starfire's real name, Coriander, is actually said by Galfor in the episode Betrothed. You can hear it if you pay attention when the two are yelling at one another in Tamaranian. Number 98, Starfire is allergic to metallic chromium. It's a common condition in Tamaran. Number 99, speaking of allergies, Raven dislikes chickens and is allergic to their feathers. Number 100, it's a shame Raven doesn't like chickens because she does like waffles and I hear the two go well together. She also likes pizza, but to a lesser extent. Number 101. Any Teen Titans fan knows the words of Raven's spell, Azeroth, Metreon, Zinthos. Azeroth is the dimension she originates from, but Metreon and Zinthos have been revealed to have no meaning. Number 102. Raven is the only character to have her birthday celebrated or even mentioned in the show. Number 103. It's been revealed that the show's head writer, David Slack, intentionally had Beast Boy and Raven written in the vein of a married couple. Their relationship was one of deep loyalty and affection, but also also of conflict and personality clashes. Number 104. Over the course of the series, Beast Boy says dude around 114 times. Dude. Number 105, Beast Boy is great at origami. Cyborg loves meat and hates tofu. Number 107, Cyborg has a total of 35 weak spots. Hey everyone, thanks for watching 107 Facts. Don't forget to leave a like and don't forget to leave a comment letting us know what show or movie you want us to do 107 Facts on next. And hey, remember, Fred Raider loves you.